Have you ever heard about the Tiger King, the man who challenged fate itself? In the heart of India, a child was born to royalty, Maharaja Surjilani Jongjong Bahadur. As the sun rose on his tenth day of life, a prophecy was spoken, a foretelling of his death by the very beast he'd come to embody, a tiger. Yet the Maharaja, headstrong and defiant, resolved to cheat fate. His obsession with tigers took root, his life's purpose distilled into one goal. And so, the hunt for the hundred tigers began. With a will of iron and a heart full of courage, the Maharaja pursued his destiny. His life became a symphony of tiger hunts, each echoing with the roar of defiance against a fate foretold. The Maharaja's determination was unyielding. He rejected the British officer's request to hunt tigers within his state, asserting his sovereign rule and his personal vendetta against the beasts. In a gesture of appeasement, diamond rings, glittering with promises of friendship were sent to the officer. Yet, they were hoarded by the officer's wife, a silent testament to greed and diplomacy. The elusive hundredth tiger, however, seemed to be a ghost, absent from the Maharaja's hunts. This is when his Dewan, the crafty official, hatched a plan. An old tiger was placed in the forest, a decoy for the Maharaja's destined adversary. The tiger king shot and the tiger collapsed, not from the bullet, but from fear. The Tiger King had seemingly defeated his fate, or so it appeared. Fate, however, is not so easily defied. The hundredth tiger, the one foretold to be the Tiger King's undoing, met its end not by the direct hand of the Maharaja, but out of sheer terror. The old, decrepit beast, planted in the forest by the cunning Duan, fell not to the King's bullet, but to its own fear-induced collapse. The Maharaja's staff, in a desperate attempt to maintain the illusion of a successful hunt, had to finish off the terrified creature themselves. Irony, that master of unexpected twists had yet one more card to play in this grand tale of superstition and fate. The Tiger King, having spent a lifetime hunting tigers to defy a prophecy, met his end in the most unlikely of ways. Not in the midst of a fierce battle with a mighty tiger, not in the claws of the hundredth beast, but in a quiet, ordinary moment at home. A wooden toy, a simple plaything for his son, was the instrument of his demise. A poorly carved wooden tiger, its rough edges hiding a fatal sliver that found its way into the Tiger King's hand. An innocuous wound, a mere prick, and yet it spelled the end for the mighty hunter. In the end, the Tiger King met his fate, not in the claws of a tiger, but in the hands of a wooden toy. The hundredth tiger had taken its final revenge.